Here at 49ers Training Camp, this is Cam Inman with Dan Brown. Uh, here to provide the top three things we saw today at practice Wednesday, their final practice before Friday's exhibition opener. And while they were out at practice today, Dan, they made a move that was not totally surprising. It may catch some people off guard because of the name, but they got rid of uh, center Jeremy Zuda, a pro bowler last year with the Baltimore Ravens, a guy that they traded for but a guy that couldn't get up the depth chart and uh, really challenged Daniel Kilgore for the starting spot. And really, he didn't really look like the happiest guy out of camp as, as they were like, keep following him down the depth chart. Yeah, and this was really kind of a veteran courtesy thing. They had a personnel meeting last night that kind of went over the depth chart and where people stood. And it was increasingly clear that Zuda wasn't going to play that much in the preseason. So they released him as a courtesy to give him a chance to hook on with another team. You know, the big, one of the things Shanahan talked about today is they're big on versatility on the offensive line. Center only, that's a negative. They want somebody who can play center, who can play guard. They're going to do a little mix and match as the preseason goes on. And, um, you know, Kilgore is really establishing himself as that number one center. Yeah, the number two guy will probably be Tim Barnes. Uh, maybe Eric Magnuson is a number one, or is a number three, excuse me, uh, that you'll see in the exhibition season. But also on the offensive line front, uh, more news today. Uh, Joshua Garnett, who's been out with a knee injury uh, the last few days, we knew he was going to be facing surgery. That surgery will be taking place tomorrow uh, sounds like it'll be an arthroscopic clean out procedure uh, that likely will keep him out a month um, and i think kyle shanahan said it would be a battle shanahan said it was going to be a battle. battle he did not sound optimistic no. about him being available for week one so that which means most likely you got zane beatles at left guard and we talked to zane today and uh, he said look it's, it's a pretty veteran offensive line so that helps them communicate some of the minute details that can get lost but are vital to the offense so anyhow let's move on to number two what's number two dan we had a little quarterback to watch today. C.J. Beathard made a really good impression today. He um, hit some deep passes, almost hit another long one where he threw the ball about 45 yards through the air. Um, it was dropped by, um, I lost track of who dropped it. It was Bolden. Victor Bolden. Victor Bolden, who redeemed himself later with a pretty nice tumbling catch. Quick six, I believe. Quick six. Because he scores touchdowns. Quick. Shot 50%. Okay. He had a uh, yeah. dropped one long pass, but hauled in another one later. But, you know, the point was that CJ, as a rookie, looks comfortable in practice. He's not overmatched. It, the game's not too quick for him. You could maybe talk a little bit about the rotation for well, the Kansas City game because yeah. it's significant. Yeah, so what they're going to, this the, the idea going into this exhibition opener is Brian Hoyer will start with no surprise, but there is a little question whether CJ had shown enough in camp to move up to the, be the number two quarterback, but Matt Barkley will be the number two in the exhibition opener, and then CJ will be the number three. I don't know if that means if Nick Mullins gets in because sometimes the fourth quarterback doesn't get in in these early exhibitions. Uh, I would think maybe in, we, in the second or third exhibition game that we might see uh, Beathard up in number two just to give him yeah, a shot. Yeah, and you know, Shanahan threw in as a little aside this is how we're doing it this week. It may change for week two. So already Beathard's putting a little heat on that number two spot. He looked good. You know, there's, his offense back at Iowa was a pro-style offense, so he's not facing the learning curve that some of these rookie quarterbacks do. Right. He's used to taking the ball out from under center. He wasn't one of those read option systems or one of those spread offense systems. He's doing what he's always done, and it, um, it shows. He said, he said, I asked him on the side, how often are you guys in shotgun? And he said more than he did in college. So oh, okay. it's a little yeah. bit like that. Too. It's kind of like 50-50 right now. It all depends on the situation. But let's get to the number three thing. Let's go to the cornerbacks. Uh, there is news this morning uh, that Tremaine Brock, the former 49ers cornerback, had a domestic violence case dismissed against him uh, by the Santa Clara County District Attorney's Office, citing a uh, lack of evidence. The, uh, the alleged victim would not cooperate. So he's a free agent. He was a free agent, but now more teams kind of have the green light to sign him. I didn't think that the Niners would, would pursue him. There was a report saying that they were among the four teams interested, but uh, Kyle Shannon said they're not. Um, one reason why you know, may, people may think, well, they could use some veteran help on the cornerback. Uh, they have an injured possible starter in Dante Johnson. He missed today's practice with a concussion, but he was out there, so it doesn't look too serious. Um, but your thoughts on the cornerback situation? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this, this new regime, the Niners had the uh, reputation issue yeah. a couple years ago. Yeah. Uh, um, what, uh, they need to get past all that stuff mm -hmm. and bring back somebody who has been in trouble. Uh, I, you know, I just don't see that happening. Right. Shanahan didn't really even leave the window open as that as yeah. a possibility. That was kind of a quick dismissive answer, which is, you know, he's thought, usually expansive on every topic, but right. not, on, not on Tremaine Brock. Yeah, I thought it was, it was great that they're kind of coming out like, like Zuna. Like they, they're, they're cutting bait when they can yeah. and they don't drag it on. Uh, a couple injury notes that we want to update you on. 
Uh, we'll have, I'll start off with Donovan Newsom, uh, linebacker that was carried mm -hmm. off the field or taken off the field by a stretcher and in an ambulance yesterday to go up to Stanford for evaluation. Uh, we learned yesterday afternoon that he had a concussion, but he didn't have any uh, cervical spine fractures. And everything's progressing fine, uh, coming out well uh, from what we understand with Donovan Newsom. Who else? Well, linebacker Reuben Foster, yeah, who had an ankle injury the other day, missed one play. He's list, missed a little bit more this time. Mm -hmm. He came out, um, got the attention of the, of the trainers, and got the attention of John Lynch, who wandered over to mm -hmm. check on his high draft pick. He seems okay. Um, I watched Jeff Ferguson, the trainer, really tape up that ankle. Foster did return to the, to the playing field. He didn't stick around that long. Uh, he didn't play in the final session. It's just, you know, if it happens twice in a short span, it's something you start monitoring. And yes. because Reuben Foster is Reuben Foster, you, you monitor it anyway. Um, so yeah, it does, I wonder if he'll play Friday night. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe why, why take the chance with him? And why don't have to show everybody what he can do in an exhibition opener? Also, another rookie, George Kittle, is uh, dealing with a hamstring, so he's not expected to play Friday night too. So uh, that's it here from 49ers Training Camp. Thanks for watching.